Hello everyone, welcome to this second virtual session. Today we're going to talk about feedback. Again, we have our trainer, Karina Alvarado. Hi Karina. Hi Annie. Hello everyone. We're happy to have you back here. We're happy to have you back too. <laughs> Guys, remember that in teachinghealth.net you will find more courses, lesson plans, a community to share, formats, material information about the scholarships and job opportunities and other tools for English teachers. The topic of today is feedback. And again, Karina is with us. Uh, she has a lot of experience in the English field. She has been very prepared in learning English as a student and learning how to teach English and now learning how to train English teachers. And she's of course studying at the university Professor Enseñanza Media. She has worked as an English teacher and this year she's working as a teacher trainer. So, let's start with the goals of the session. For this session, our first goal will be to have the basic idea of what feedback is and how to use it to improve your teaching abilities. May you say the second one, Karina? Sure. Uh, for the second one, we have learned the characteristics of effective feedback. Then we will share about our experience using feedback. And the last one, to do a feedback session with real life examples. Yeah. Okay. So, what is feedback? Feedback is information that flows between people that has to do with their interaction in the here and now. But in our own words, well, I will say feedback is information that we receive from something or someone that we can use to take action. What would you say, Karina, that is feedback? Well, basically feedback is uh, helpful information that either you receive or give in order to improve uh, on a specific performance that you're doing or that other person is doing. That's right. Yeah, we can receive or give. Yeah. Um, a good example are coffee machines. When coffee machines are ready with the coffee, they either make a sound, turn on a light, and that's information that we receive. When you see that light or when you hear the sound that the coffee is ready, that's information that you're receiving. That's feedback that you're receiving from the machine. The action that you take from that moment on is your decision, but the feedback is there. The information you are receiving is the coffee is ready. So in the bottom part, you will see that there is a source link that will take you to a book where the feedback information was taken from. This book is about laboratories in human... I can't read it very well, but you will find it there in the presentation. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so there is a difference between feedback and effective feedback, right, Karina? Yeah, there is a huge difference between both of them. Yeah, so it says that effective feedback can be heard by the receiver, keeping the relationship intact, open and healthy. It includes constructive criticism and it doesn't mean that the giver is right and the receiver is wrong. It's just an invitation to interaction and reflection. What do you yeah, think? Basically, well, yeah, something that is very important to remember is that feedback is a gift. Right? You can either get the best from what you you're hearing or you just ignore what the other person is telling you. Wow, that's a beautiful way of saying it. Feedback is a gift. Yeah. They're right. Yeah, and uh, well, like, well, well, we can see the difference between this normal feedback and effective feedback is the fact that um, you're trying to help another person to improve themselves. And just with feedback, you're just criticizing someone for something they're doing, not as they should. Yeah, that's right. So then let's move to how to apply it. So it's, it will be better 
if it's after the experience happened and sometimes we don't have the opportunity to give feedback to people um, right after the experience but it's very recommended that if you're gonna tell someone uh, if you want to share with someone feedback about an event an action an activity they performed and you want to help them with your feedback it's very recommended that it happens right after the experience why is that recommended Karina? that's very that's very important because uh, all the information is fresh i just that experience just happened so you remember basically most of the details and most of the things that you did it's very important because you have everything right here in your mind that's right so information is fresh then we have to separate a time for it. Uh, why is it important? Basically, uh, here, as the same as we did with Nikfa, um, it is very important that you have a specific time to listen uh, if somebody is giving you feedback, because um, there or that person is trying to help you, and you are going to learn a lot from experience and you're going to uh, go back to what the, you to the experience that you previously did and you're going to um, try to figure out in ways on how to improve that experience so it's very important that you have time and you don't rush because mm -hmm. if you rush it then maybe you're going to forget some or very important facts of the experience that you have yeah I know there is no specific time to give a feedback session but how much would you think that is the recommended approximate timing to give a normal feedback session? Well, as you said, it, um, like there is a specific time and it depends on what you're giving feedback for. I would say like 10 minutes will be enough. Okay. So if in you 10 have minutes, more time, then minutes. that's perfect. It's 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So 10 minutes will be a normal feedback session. Mm -hmm. Professional and not personal comments. What about? Well, uh, if you're the one giving feedback, it's very important that you keep it professional because um, if you put your personal opinion into your feedback, then you are not helping the other person. But if you're basing your feedback onto something, uh, onto a theory, onto um, strategies, onto something that is that, that's improved, then you're going to be actually helpful. But if you're just um, saying what you think should be done, then that's not a very effective feedback. Okay. So, not mixing our feelings with the feedback, but trying to base our comments on theories. That's what you mean? Yeah, basing ourselves into something that has been proved rather than just, just uh, feelings and personal comments. Okay, yeah. Sometimes uh, in the practice, in real life, we use feedback as an excuse to express our feelings about something, no? So we want someone to correct themselves. We want someone to correct the way they do something. And we want to correct them. So we tell them, hey, I'm going to give you feedback. But actually what we are doing is to say what we feel and not being professional about it. So we have to be very careful with that. Yeah, instead of giving feedback, we're criticizing that person. That's right. And that's something we want to avoid. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Focus on the behavior, not the person. What can you tell us about that? Well, it, this one is very related to the professional and personal comments. Um, because here we're trying to focus on a specific behavior or a specific or meaningful moment uh, on the experience in the we're focusing on what happened in the action that affected the learning process of our students mm -hmm. or and not on the person because uh, we don't want to change the way a person acts but we want to uh, improve the action that they did okay so we have to focus on the action and the reactions Mm -hmm. not in the person mm -hmm. thank you include meaningful moments so we cannot we cannot include 
everything that we want to talk about? Um, no, basically when you're giving feedback, you're focusing only on one or two specific and meaningful moments. Because oh. you're, you're trying to be helpful. You're not trying to criticize everything that a person do, did. You're just trying to uh, help out and um, improve uh, specific, um, specific moments. Okay, you say that when we're giving feedback, normally we are talking about one or two activities that we saw. Yeah, like, well, it, yes, I will say one or two uh, activities or moments that affect the learning process of the students. Thank you, that's very useful. So, of course, when we are observing, we have to take notes to be able to give this feedback, right? Okay, okay. Make it a two-way natural conversation. So it has to be like an open conversation normally, but of course, a very professional one, no? Yeah, um, you're not uh, trying to push your ideas into the other person. You, uh, as the person giving feedback, you have to be open to the comments of the teacher to understand why it happened or what what what's what is their his or her perspective and you try to make it natural like not um, you knowing everything and they don't they don't know anything okay. but you're trying to learn in both ways okay thank you Hello teachers, we forgot to mention in this part that when we are giving feedback, we should try to only use I sentences and avoid using we sentences. For example, I could observe that instead of saying we observe that. This is because you are giving your personal point of view of what you observe. So there is a guideline we can follow about feedback. And it goes like this. Um, we gotta be genuine, honest, and be ourselves. So we don't have to try to act it out and try to look more professional and change of tone of voice. We, we just be our, ourselves to speak as we speak with the same tone of voice that we use. Of course, trying to be more professional because we are trying to help the other person, right? What about the second one? We have be balanced in the type of comments that you say. Um, this is very important. You're trying to uh, guide another person, so don't focus only on the things they need to improve, but also on the things, on the positive things that affect the, the students in a positive way. Okay. So not only saying negative things and only positive things. Find a balance. Mm -hmm. Balance. All right. Be mindful of the feelings of the participants. Yeah, of course, um, sometimes, me, people is very sensible and like some comments might hurt them. So we gotta be mindful about them because let's remember that we want to help them. So if we in any way offend the person that we are trying to help with the feedback, they will close and they will not receive any feedback. So we've got to be very careful with that. Then? Then we have um, look for a few significant issues. As we were telling you before, it's very important that you just focus on specific things and not on the overall or general class or on the overall the general behavior that one is doing and be having. They focus on only one and only two specific things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Avoid addressing too many unrelated issues. Don't comment on everything you see. Yeah, I think it's very similar to the last one you said. So when we're giving feedback, um, if we think that something didn't go well, or we think that something went very well, and we want to give feedback about it, we have to be specific and talk about this one moment that had a big impact in the result of the whole activity, right? Mm -hmm. Either if it was a good impact or a bad impact, we have to try to look for this significant moment of the experience to talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to be very specific. We cannot talk about the whole class as a 
moment because the class or the activity has different moments. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, teachers, remember that this is the guideline. So whenever you are giving feedback to someone or you want to receive feedback, this is a guideline proposing this source that you can see in the in the in the presentation. So try to include these uh, elements to your feedback and we can assure that the feedback will be effective. So here we mentioned that there are types of comments, but these are the types of comments, actually four types of comments that we can use when giving feedback. Can you tell us about them, Karina? Yeah, well, um, there's a bit of permission it's to recognize what, it is, uh, what was good in the last one. Basically, here you're uh, addressing the specific uh, things that you observed that were positive, and you're recognizing that specific moment of the lesson. Then we have questions to provide guidance and develop the thinking skills. Here you are questioning the participant or the other teacher or even the student about a specific uh, behavior or a specific action they did during that specific activity. So you're questioning why they, why or um, why do they think that happened or why do they think they did uh, that mm -hmm. specific thing. Okay, so, sorry, can I just, just to get it here yes, in the affirmation one? Uh, we talk about what we think that had a good impact in the result. Yes, okay. that's right. So in the affirmation, we talk about good things, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Questions. We ask the teacher why, uh, when, or we ask them about the reasons. Mm -hmm that they did this activity, right? Or this, uh, yeah. why they took this decision. Okay, we are going good. Then? We have concerns to provide more directive approach. So here you're focusing on one specific thing that you were wondering about. Like you're not very sure about why they did that. And you're curious and you go like, I was wondering why you decided to move this student to another place. So you're oh. just, uh, you're focusing on one specific thing that you still don't, you're trying to understand the reasons behind of, uh, the action of that specific action. Okay, so to, when we give concern comments, um, is to ask about something that we are not very sure about, and we just want to clarify, so we ask them. Good. Mm -hmm. That's huh? And the last one, we have suggestions. Uh, we don't usually suggest. Okay. We generally avoid suggestions or we avoid the phrase, you should do this, because that means that you're trying to force your knowledge into the other person's knowledge. Okay. And that's not positive for feedback. So when we give feedback, we cannot uh, impose our ideas over their ideas okay so saying you should is not permitted okay thank you feedback language what is it what is the feedback language so these uh, examples that we have here in the presentation are some sentences that you can use whenever you're going to have to give feedback to someone Okay, so these are like phrases that we can use when we're trying to give feedback. Yeah, exactly. Nice. So we have, this can help hinder learning because... So for example, I'm giving feedback to you and I can say, um, using a puzzle game can help the learning of your students because it's a more visual representation of the animals. That would be good. Okay. What about the next one? The next one we have, what might you do if, for example, um, one of your students uh, was, let's see, J. 
jumping around the class and pushing. So I'm a student. So you, mm -hmm. I will ask you, what might you do if this student falls down? Or what might you do if uh, this student pushes another student too hard and that student falls down? Okay. So possible future situations, we ask them. Then we have, I am curious about, yeah. So it's a, like a concern comment. I'm curious about why did you prefer to tell Pedrito instead of Juanito to change place with Luis or something like that? Okay, then? It is, it is basically uh, the same as I was wondering about why you decided to yes. go for a deductive approach rather than a deductive approach. It's the same. I was wondering, I'm curious about. I noticed that you told Monica to not do the exercise. And it makes me think of different levels of English in the classroom. Next time, you might want to consider telling Monica to help other classmates. Wow. <laughs> All right, so this is not like something that we as teachers have to use when giving feedback, right? Yeah, and these are used examples from us to you to help <laughs> you give feedback uh, and make it easier. Of course, there are many other yeah. phrases that you can use. So when we are starting to give feedback, this is something good to have at the hand because we tend to forget how to give feedback and remember that you should is not permitted exactly yes okay so let's get to the example part in this part supposedly i talked a class about animals and my students didn't follow the instructions um, karina observed the class she was observing and karina please could you give me feedback about that class because I really want to do better next time. Um, so Danny, I observed that at minute 345, when you were giving your students the puzzle, um, I observed that the puzzle was about animals, and your students were uh, trying to organize the puzzle in order to complete it. And I am curious about why did you decide to use a puzzle to introduce or to encounter the language rather than using um, other form of uh, encountering activities? Well, yeah, um, I chose it because it worked in a last class that I did, in a past class that I did, so I thought that this time it would work, but the other class my students were different. Um, they were teenagers, they were not kids. So I think maybe that's why it didn't work well. So you're saying that because of the age of your students, the material was not related to, that, to their age? Well, yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure, like, for me, it's a very easy thing to understand. Like it's not complicated, but I guess that yes, the the level of English is different in both classes, and well, there is a clear difference of level of English. So, yes, I would say that uh, that's why they didn't follow the instructions well. Okay, and uh, why do you think it's important to Consider the level of your students or preparing material? Um, well, I, I think that it's important to consider the level of my students before preparing the material because if they don't get the, the right level of English material, they will not perform well like it just happened to me right now. Okay, um, so what would you say is your action plan for next time? 
yeah i think it's very clear next time i will say that i have to first see what's the level of english of my students and based on that prepare the material okay okay thank you very much Dan. thank you very much karina <laughs> okay so i saw what you did you didn't tell me that i had to see the level of english of my students in order to have a better result what did you do i was using questions to get the answer the, the answer that i wanted from you nice so you always had in mind that checking the level of my students was the answer to my problem right yes basically um i was like if we uh, had discussed this before i would have imagined that uh, before the lesson you you told me what you wanted me to observe and i was observing those specific aspects of, okay. of the lesson mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why i focus on like very specific uh, activities that uh, that we have discussed previously and if we haven't discussed it then i as well i will have focused on specific things and um, that actually help or hinder the learning of the students okay yeah it was a beautiful feedback session super express fast but very efficient so guys you see whenever you have the answer to the problem you cannot impose your ideas you have to help the teachers find the answers that are inside themselves so they have the answers but you have to help them guide them to get the right answer yeah so it is better because you're as you were saying you're not imposing your ideas but you're helping to helping them to use their own knowledge to solve yeah. the problems that they have but if you consider like you really consider that they need to know something in specific then you try to tell them in a very polite uh, in a very polite way okay thank you great yeah so this is our experience um and all advice personally that's my biggest advice with feedback don't use feedback to make others see you as the perfect teacher and as the teacher that knows every answer you have to be a guide for them for other teachers and don't pretend to be smart when giving feedback just really have in mind that you are there to help them with their own knowledge as karina said if the teacher doesn't find the answer doesn't find the way you can help them more uh, specifically with what you want them to to answer but you never impose your ideas you always suggest um, ideas what would you say that is your experience and your advice karina well um well, as we discussed at the beginning of the session, um, it's an open conversation. Sometimes you are, like you're serving and you want to give feedback on something that you thought that it uh, didn't work as expected. And maybe when the teacher is the behind that specific moment or using dicta to describe the moment, you realize that you didn't observe specific things or that uh, what you were thinking was uh, not in the appropriate way or the appropriate feedback to give at that moment. So, like, always uh, keep your mind open to what the teacher has to say uh, and don't only close yourself into what you believe is right. And another thing very important, remember that you're guiding and helping another person, you're not imposing your idea, so don't go and say, I think your class didn't work because your students were not speaking. Maybe like the class's objective was for them to uh, start writing instead of speaking. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so we have the three specific uh, recommendations. First, be specific with your comments. Beautiful comment that Karina gave at the beginning of our uh, example was at the minute 
14, you did this uh, activity. So she was telling me the right time, the right time that where I did activity and the activity that I performed. She didn't tell me in the first activity that you did, it was like, I might not remember what was the first activity. Maybe for me, my first activity was the encounter, but for she, the first activity is the warm up. So you have to be very specific uh, to don't have uh, bad situations when giving feedback. Mm -hmm. That's true. And then we have if the person can change one thing for next time, we will have the greatest impact. Um, so it's very important that whenever you're giving feedback, you go through the DIGPA process, <laughs> as we learned in the last session. So you might describe what happened but through questions and you guide the teacher through the other stages until the action plan, that is something that they need to do based on your feedback and based on their own comments. Focus on what can be done better next time, not on what the person did bad. Normally, most of the times when we discuss about someone, about a class, we go directly to, oh, I saw that you did this wrong, or oh, I saw that your students didn't, do the didn't follow the instructions, or you didn't complete, the, you didn't reach the objective, or blah, 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 negative, negative, negative things. And if we only talk about what we did wrong, uh, well, teachers will feel depressed, <laughs> like thinking about, oh, yes, I did wrong, oh, yes, I did wrong. Instead, we should focus on what can be done better next time. Just as Karina guided me through the process in the feedback uh, example, she was guiding me to an action plan. So she made me see that next time I could do better if I applied an action plan. But if you only talk about the bad things and you help the teachers find out why it happened and you leave it like that, they will have no reasons to repeat the activity again and try to do better. So always remember that when you are giving feedback, you are trying them to find a way of doing it better for the next time. Yeah, and just to recall on that, um, it's very important that um, if you're giving feedback, maybe to have a balance, you focus on one positive aspect that helps learning and one aspect that hinder the learning of your students. Yeah, uh, help and hinder, that's important. Final comments, um, feedback is beautiful, feedback is life. Try to use feedback as possible as you can. Uh, you don't have to be an, ex an expert to give feedback, but you have to be very conscious when you give it and when you receive it. I think that in this session we covered more, more the part of how to give feedback, but also there is a whole uh, mindset that you have to have when you are receiving feedback. That's true. Uh, well, another final comment will be feedback is something that we use all the time, not only when observing a class of another teacher, but maybe when we're working with our students, we also need to give them feedback on some specific things, or even if we are working with our friends, or we use it all the time. So keep in mind all of the aspects and the tools that we gave at the beginning in order for you to give effective feedback and that people in start seeing you as someone that can be trusted rather than just someone that criticizes them. Beautiful final comment. I could not have said it better. Well, and we close with a Elon Musk quote, one of my favorite humans on earth. He says, I think it's very important to have feedback loop, to have a feedback loop where you are constantly thinking about what you have done and how you could be doing it better. You see, even Elon Musk thinks that when we are receiving feedback, we have to focus on how we can do better next time. So this is all for now. Thank you, Karina, for sharing your knowledge about feedback. For me, feedback is another beautiful and important skill that we as teachers have to have and uh, thank you guys for participating in this virtual session we hope this is very useful for you for your learning for your teaching abilities uh, that you use it to improve them and if you have any questions 
all emails will appear there in the screen. You can contact us and ask for more uh, advice, comments, or questions uh, that you might have. Yes, well, thank you so much for coming again to this second session, and I hope to see you, well, to be here with you again soon, sharing many more uh, skills or knowledge with you. Thank you so much, Karina. I appreciate it, and see you in the next one. Bye. See you. Bye-bye.